Welcome to this class. Last class we were telling about Joule's law and its mathematical application. And this class we are dealing with electric power. By the way, if you have missed last class, you can see that link given at the top of this video so that you can see that video. Let's begin today's class. We have studied last year about the power energy work and the same thing we are studying in electric power also because electrical energy is doing some work in a circuit and this rate of doing work as we have studied last year power is the rate of doing work in our electrical circuit also the same thing is happening that is rate of doing work that is power as far as electricity is concerned electric current is doing the work in the circuit that we have studied last class last two or three classes we were telling about the same thing in electrical circuit some form of energy is produced from electrical energy that means electrical energy is used and consumed that consumed electrical energy is actually for work and that work is we consider in case of Joule's law we are telling that work is nothing but the heat that is H that heat produced we consider as that work done and time T if these two things are there we can write W by T which is nothing but H heat by T So here H is heat energy and Joule's law we know the expression for this heat energy H is equal to I square R T and H is equal to V I T and H is equal to V square by R T. Therefore H by T is equal to this by T. We can cancel this T and this H by T is nothing but power. So P is equal to I square R and here P is equal to V I and here power is equal to V square by R. All these three expressions give you the power and generally we consider this power as p product v and i because we consider this p in a unit watt watt is nothing but here heat is form of energy in joules and time in second so we can write 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second that is rate of doing work 1 watt is in 1 second we are getting 1 joule work done so 1 joule per second is called watt this name is given in honor of James Watt the scientist now funny thing is there about this watt there is only one question in physics having the same answer. That is, what is the unit of power? The answer is, what is the unit of power? So it is very easy to remember you or reminding that particular point. What is the unit of power? What is the unit of power? But what and what is different? One is WHAT Watt and the other is WATT Watt. If we are taking this power P in watts we call it as wattage and volt V in volt is called voltage and I 
in ampere we call amperage so p in watt wattage volt voltage and ampere amperage so we can write an equation wattage is equal to voltage into amperage from this we can write amperage is equal to wattage by voltage that means every electrical device the amperage is calculated by dividing its wattage by the voltage with which that electrical device is connected on every electrical device there will be a specification there will be a label on which it will be written its wattage and voltage some other details too but here we consider that wattage and voltage and here is an electric iron let us see what is written on that label it is written here wattage is 1000 watt and voltage is 240 volt isn't it what does actually it mean it means 240 volt if supply is there it will consume 1000 watts that is 1000 joules energy electrical energy it will consume in 1 second if voltage is 240 volt now let us consider any electrical device there will be some facts factors of electrical um, circuit that we will list here that is the resistance of device r voltage v current i and power p all these things will be interrelated to i will introduce you a table giving that interrelationship between or among these factors and we can see some more details from the table and we can come to some conclusions when we analyze the table so in the table i have written v that is voltage in volt here i ampere in ampere now why i write these two around here because every device we have to get a voltage to start with so basic the first thing we want is a voltage if we connect this device to a supply there will be a flow of electric current with an intensity that is depending on that particular device now let us see the product of v and i product first letter is p so we can write p which is product what is product of v and i we can write vi it is a coincidence to re remember p this is nothing but product but the same thing is power so p p p product power we will get this concept of power by multiply v and i so product now that is in watts now same way v i you take a ratio what is the first letter of ratio r so i am writing r because it is a ratio between v and i again coincidence is there that r is nothing but our resistance so ratio resistance product power so you won't confuse once you set this table this will give you 
an amazing result in the coming discussions. For example, from this P V I we can write here V is equal to P by I and I is equal to P by V. This side we can write R is V by I. So V is equal to V is equal to I R and I is equal to V by R. If you remember this much, any problem connected to power and this energy, so many things are there that we will discuss later, we can easily calculate. To start with, let us take one example, an electric kettle. So its wattage is 500. It is written on that kettle, it is written 500. Now the voltage connected 200 volt. So we are having V 500 watt. Now every electrical device we know there will be a resistance. Now we have to calculate these two things because these two are blank here. We can calculate what is the current flowing through that um, kettle and what is its resistance. So how can we calculate that now I? We know I is equal to P by V. P is 500, 500 by 200, 5 by 2 that is 2.5 ampere. Now R, immediately we can calculate R. R is equal to V by I, 200 by 2.5 which is nothing but 2000 by 25. We can get the answer 80 ohms. R in ohms. Calculator here 80 is the resistance of the kettle 2.5 current is flowing through this one. If it is connected to 100 volt and its wattage is 500 watts. Now take for example another one a bulb of 100 watt. Same voltage 200 it is working. We can calculate current the same way, 100 by 200, 1 by 2, that is 0.5. And resistance of that bulb, the same way we can calculate, V by I, 200 by 0.5, that is 2000 by 5, which is equal to 400. Now we can start comparing these two. If power is 500, that device resistance is 80. And here power 100, resistance is 400. So we can get an inference from this one. If you use a higher wattage device, its resistance will be less but current will be more. Here it is 2.5 ampere but in the case of this bulb of 100 watt it is only 0.5 ampere. Now another question very often this question is asked for our exam. If this bulb is working in 100 volt supply at 200 volt it is giving you 100 watts power what will be its power if it is working in 100 volt? 200 volt, 100 watt. So 100 volt, we will be tempted to give an immediate answer as it is half, half 50 watts. I am not telling you have to do that. It is not correct. We have to find out from this table. So simple. Let us see. Is 100 volt is the voltage and the bulb is the same. Once bulb is the same, one thing won't change. You know what that one thing is not changing voltage, current, power or resistance. That filament is there in the bulb that we can't do anything because it is there. It gives that volt resistance of 400 ohm. So it is a constant for the bulb. Whatever is the voltage you are giving, that voltage won't affect this resistance. So we can write in the next column that 400 
ohm resistance. Now two blanks are there. Once we have resistance 400 and volt 100, we can have current from this equation V by R that is 100 by 400. Nothing but 0.25. So we can write here 0.25. Analyze once again this one. 200 volt became 100 volt. 0.5 became 0.25. You know which law we are using here? Last year's Ohm's law. Voltage and current are directly proportional. What happened here? Voltage is made half. So naturally current also will be made half. Because resistance the same. Once we get V and I, immediately we can calculate power. As the product as we have already seen. P product V and I. 100 into 0.25. That is 25 watt. So at the glance we will be tempted to tell 50, but it is not 50, it is only 25 watt. So though it is a 100 watt bulb, it is not necessary to give always 100 watt, depends on the voltage, that wattage will be changed. So this is a sure question for your exam. They will be giving you a voltage and a power, and what will be the power if voltage is either increased or decreased, you can calculate. I hope you got that concept from this table. So we were telling some findings from the table. We can summarize findings from the table and these are the findings of that table. Coming back to the label of electric iron. We can consider this one as an assignment for you. We can calculate the current flowing through that electric iron and its resistance. I hope all the questions you can answer and have a nice time. We will meet in the coming video.